Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you here today for my first collaboration video ever. We partnered with a really cool channel called Wood by Wright. You'll see his logo right here. And we decided to make some joiners mallets. Uh, he got these and he made them out of some firewood out of his backyard. It's really cool. One of the really kind of cool things about his channel is he does everything by hand. He does, uses a lot of hand tools on his stuff, a lot of planes, a lot of saws. So I tried to stay in that same sort of spirit with this build. I did end up using a power sander because quite honestly, I hate sanding and anything I can do to minimize that time, I will. But for the rest of it, I tried to stay in that same spirit. So also, since he rated his fire, wood pile for his materials, I figured I should probably do the same for mine. So what this is, is we had some down trees in our backyard. This is a piece of pine. This is a pretty cool piece where there's a bunch of branches coming off of like one little node there. So I thought that might make something pretty interesting after I sanded it down. The other kind of cool thing is it was all sitting out for a while. So there's a lot of really cool spalting and you can see all the little insect trails going through everything. Now this piece is a piece of apple wood. Um, Got that because it had that same sort of branching pattern to it. So now what I'm doing, at this point I didn't really know how far I was going to go into the wood. I knew I was going to put some epoxy over the top of it, but I didn't know if I was going to sand it really smooth or if I was going to leave it pretty rough on the outside. So I'm just kind of exploring it and seeing what it looks like on the inside under the bark. Just using a hand carving knife to kind of get under there and see what everything's like. So with this next scene, you can tell I decided to go a little bit deeper. Uh, this is the sanding I did do. I went down there. And I was really glad I did, because you could see a lot of the spalting that you couldn't see when you just simply took the bark off of it. Going over to the piece of pine here, uh, I tried to make the end kind of as spherical shaped as I could. It's not a perfect sphere or anything like that, but I wanted to get down kind of as close as I could. I wanted to leave some of the bark on there. I knew I was going to dip it in the epoxy, so I figured that would make a pretty cool pattern after everything got really saturated. So after I got the rough shape, I needed to go back and I needed to make a way to attach the handles onto the heads. I started filing it, and after I started filing it for a little while, I was like, you know what? I could probably just take the saw and I could go through this and make it into kind of a cube shape, get the majority of the material off of the saw, and then go back with the rasp and kind of get it back into that round shape to fit inside there. After I started sawing it, I figured I needed to kind of make a couple marks that I could aim for, so I did a couple pencil marks down there so I could, yeah, know where I was going. So after I got to the rough shape, I could start fitting the head on there and see exactly how much more I had to file off of it. The wood was feeling a little bit weak at this point, but I still thought it would be okay after I glued it down to that shoulder joint down there. But unfortunately what ended up happening is when I was off camera trying to get everything completely square with that bottom joint, it went snap. So now I had to figure out a new way to mount the head on there. I figure just about the only really strong way to do it is to introduce another piece of wood into there. So I got a Forstner bit, I drilled a hole as far down as a Forstner bit would go into the handle. And of course a little bit before that I had found this piece of walnut dowel in my scrap bin. It wasn't quite big enough for the hole on the head of the mallet, but I figured that it wouldn't really matter that much after I glued it into the base and then I could use a little bit of two-part epoxy and just drizzle it in over the top filling in any voids that were there. So after the dowel had dried inside the handle, we took it over to the vise, and I still really wanted it to have that look like it was made from a single piece of wood. Basically, I wanted to fake it. So what I did is I put that mallet head up there, and I saw exactly how much I had to cut off. So that didn't quite protrude out the top, and then I could take another piece of that piece that did break off, cut it down, and then stick it over as just a cab over the top of it so you couldn't see any of that business underneath it. So before I glued the head on there, I wanted to make sure that I masked off the uh, this line right here. It was going to be really hard to get in there with sandpaper and clean it up afterwards. So I always make sure to put that on there. It's a lot easier to just peel that masking tape off and peel off any epoxy that's on there than it is to go back and remove it manually. So after we got all that epoxy on there, it's really just a matter of positioning it correctly. Here's me dripping some more in the top and that way it's going to fill in any voids that I didn't get. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cap it off with a piece of that original wood. So with this piece here, now after everything was all dried and cured, what I wanted to do is I wanted to figure out exactly where my hand was going to rest on there so I could make a handle for it. 
Now I wanted to have the handle material inset into the wood so there wasn't a lip on it. I didn't want it to sit proud of the mating surface. So I just took a carving knife and started going after it. And you can see here how the lip starts to build up and it'll give me a place to sink that material down into. So now we're getting on to the second handle. Now originally I was going to mount this the other way around and have that kind of be the bottom like the ball and the other one was, but I looked at it and I thought it'd be pretty cool if it looked like those branches were almost growing into the handle, like it was like a little organic piece there. So took out the saw and here I am just kind of, I'm trimming it down a little bit so it's a little bit closer to where it needs to be. Now with that saw I was using, it's not going to be on the same plane, so I just had to take it over the sander and I wanted to make sure that it was small enough to fit under there and not have any overhang and just have a nice smooth flat surface. So after I had marked out exactly where I wanted it to sit, I had to go back and glue the just that same dowel inside the handle with this one. And at this point, I'm not really exactly sure why I did what I did. Here I am trimming it to the right size. Um, but I went back and I glued it with some wood glue. Looking back, I probably should have just used epoxy for the whole thing, but at the time it seemed a little bit easier for me. If you use wood glue for the one joint, then it would stick together, and then I could just kind of drizzle that epoxy in through the top. So. Here I am gluing it down, then clamping it down so it dries a little bit, and then I'll go back and fill it up again. So after I got all the epoxy in there, got it to kind of sink down into it a little bit, waited in between there. I heated it up so it would flow a little bit better, and then I put the cap on top of it. So I still need to get the material for the handle. The closest place I knew where to get it was in Mexico, so we had to charter a flight down there. <laughs> So after I got down there, we were out sitting on the beach, and I started looking up at the palm trees, as one does when they're just sitting on the beach, and they had these really cool old weathered leaves at the base of them. I started thinking about how cool they would be if you could showcase that fiber and encase it in some resin. So we harvested some of them, threw them back in the suitcase, and it came on back home. So with all that nonsense done, it was time to get back into the shop and get some work done. So I got the palm tree fiber, cut it down to the length I would need, and then I had to figure out how to attach it onto the handles because you can't just put the epoxy on there and expect it to stick. Everything will just slide off everywhere. So I tried using the five minute epoxy on this one and it really worked pretty well. Um, put it on there, fold it over, clamped it, and then I put it on, a little bit more on there, fold it over again. I kept repeating that process until it was wrapped all the way around the handle. So with the other one, I decided to try a slightly different method. Basically, I got that fiber and I just used the staple gun. I did go and I cut it at kind of an angle. I didn't want there to be a really steep ridge, like a really pronounced bump, because I was going to go back and sand over the stuff, so I didn't want it to, you know, change the texture right where that ridge was. So with all the first epoxy cured and with everything all fastened down on the other one, I went back and I mixed up a thing of epoxy. Now I ended up doing probably about three coats. I sanded with 220 grit sandpaper in between all of them and just put it back on. Uh, right here what I'm doing the first coat is I really wanted to heat it up so I got the torch out because when you heat it up it gets a lot, it flows quite a bit better and I want it to really sink into everything and really attach to it. So I ended up trying a couple different finishes on this stuff. Uh, tried going over it with some steel wool. I didn't know if I wanted it to be quite as shiny. It didn't seem like a really good fit for a working tool. But when I did that, you really lost so much detail, especially in the bottoms of both of the pieces. So the final finish was basically just that raw epoxy after it cured. So here we have the finished product. The handle on here, it's really hard to capture in video exactly how deep the uh, kind of texture is on the handle and how far in, into there you can see. On this part of it, I did go back and use the wipe on poly. It seemed to fit a little bit better and make kind of a transition piece into the heads. The heads on both the mallets, I used the wipe on poly because I didn't want that epoxy to be taking any kind of impacts. I thought it just wouldn't hold up very well. Pretty cool on this bottom piece. You can really see all the little spalting in there, all the little bacteria or fungus or whatever it is that gets in there and changes the color. Um, really enjoyed that. And then again, like I was talking about earlier, when you start getting up to the top of it, you can start seeing where all those little worms were boring under the bark when it was just sitting out in the wood pile there between that and those black spots.
Now, of course, I couldn't send a tool out to somebody without testing them, so here we go. And it looks like they pass with flying colors. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you have not already, go click down those description below and go check out Wood by Wright. Watching those mallet heads come out of that solid wood is really cool. If you enjoyed what I did, please hit that like button and subscribe to see more of what I'm doing. I will see you guys in the next video.